three lectures and I will start uh, to give you an overview on functional GI disorders during infancy. Infants with functional gastrointestinal disorders, can we help? Childhood functional gastrointestinal disorders include a variable combination of chronic or intermittent symptoms from the digestive tract, not otherwise explained by structural or biochemical abnormalities. In pediatrics, functional gastrointestinal disorders for infants and toddlers have been addressed in the Rome 3 classification. Of the defined entities, four of seven are limited to infancy and, except for the rare disorder of infant rumination syndrome, are mostly resolving spontaneously within the first six months of life. Although functional gastrointestinal disorders are well-defined entities, the symptoms are unspecific. History and physical examination alone may misclassify a small proportion of infants which have, in fact, organic diseases, such as gastroesophageal reflux disease, cow's milk protein allergy, or other diagnoses. Therefore, infants with these common symptoms are a challenge for the caring physicians and a financial burden for the healthcare system. The frequency of gastrointestinal symptoms, including frequent regurgitation, infant colic and constipation, has been assessed in several population-based studies. In Italy, 150 pediatricians followed 20 consecutive term infants each, a total of 2,879, from birth to six months of age, by monthly checkups for the presence of gastrointestinal symptoms. At least one gastrointestinal symptom was reported in 54.9% of the infants during follow-up. Frequent regurgitation was the most common symptom, 23.2%, followed by infant colic, 20.5%, and constipation, 17.6%. Another Italian prospective cross-sectional survey, including 9,660 children from 0 to 12 years of age, looked at functional gastrointestinal disorders according to the Rome criteria and confirmed that infant regurgitation was the most common functional gastrointestinal disorder, accounting for 37.1% of 194 identified cases. Infants with gastrointestinal symptoms showed significantly higher hospitalization rate compared to infants without such complaints. Regurgitation and excessive crying were the main reasons for hospitalization, resulting in admittance rates of 6.2% in frequent spillers and 5.8% of infants with excessive crying. If infant regurgitation, infant colic and infant dyskepsia are considered as benign self-limiting conditions, why should we care and consider interventions? It is the disturbing character of the symptoms, not only for the infant but also for the caregivers, particularly for the mother, that demands for an intervention. This applies particularly for infants with excessive crying. Infants with functional gastrointestinal disorders have a high risk for incorrect diagnosis and are inappropriately exposed to invasive investigations, radiation and potentially harmful interventions, medications or even surgery. A common practice in regurgitating and fussing infants is a frequent change of the formula, either chosen by the mother or advised by the caring paediatrician. This may result in malnutrition if alternative formulas, based on unmodified milk from different animals, formulas based on rice, almonds or other sources, are given. Mothers of infants with functional gastrointestinal disorders may discontinue breastfeeding, hoping that a specialized formula may resolve the symptoms. How can we help infants with functional gastrointestinal disorders? If an extensive clinical history and physical examination does not indicate any alarm signs and symptoms, unnecessary diagnostic procedures should be strictly avoided in infants with functional gastrointestinal disorders. Parental reassurance and education that their child is healthy and that symptoms are benign and self-limiting, and anticipatory guidance are most important. Certain recommendations can be given, depending on the symptom, what to do and what not to do. Some, but not all of these recommendations, are evidence-based. Drugs. 
Neither in infant regurgitation nor infant colic, acid suppressive or prokinetic drugs should be prescribed. Simithicon has no proven benefit compared to placebo. Infant dyskepsia with straining and crying before the successful passage of soft stools is very commonly misinterpreted by both parents and physician as constipation. Giving suppositories or laxatives are inappropriate reactions and should be avoided. For infants with proven constipation and exclusion of organic causes including cow's milk protein allergy, osmotic laxatives may be considered after dietary measures have failed. However, randomized controlled trials including infants are rare and inconclusive. Behavioral intervention. A tobacco-free environment is recommended for colicky infants because passive smoking may worsen the symptoms. Dietary intervention. General recommendations. Small volume feeding and burping after feeding may reduce the frequency of regurgitation and spilling. Overfeeding should be avoided. Reduction of lactose. A formula with reduced lactose content has no proven beneficial effect compared to a standard formula. Thickened feeding. A recent meta-analysis, including 14 randomized controlled trials, concluded that thickening of the feeding with carob bean gum, starch or fibers decreased episodes of regurgitation compared to controls, but not acid exposure to the esophageal mucosa. In spite of the beneficial effect on the frequency of regurgitation, an intervention in healthy and thriving infants who are not bothered by the symptom is not indicated. Extensively hydrolyzed or amino acid based formula. In a small proportion of infants with infantile colic, regurgitation, or constipation, the symptoms may be due to cow's milk protein allergy. Therefore, an exclusion challenge procedure is justified with therapeutic formula in infants with severe symptoms who are not exclusively breastfed. Prebiotics. In constipated infants, no significant difference in defecation frequency or crying time compared to a standard formula was found with a formula with a mixture of prebiotics, SN-2 palmitic acid and whey hydrolysate. In colicky infants, a prebiotic-enriched formula was superior to a standard formula plus semithicon to reduce crying time. However, the study had several limitations in design with respect to outcome parameters and blinding. Probiotics Lactobacilli and bifidobacteria were reported to increase stool frequency and reduce consistency in healthy infants, but no randomized controlled trial has been performed in infants with constipation. In colicky infants, Lactobacillus ruteri was reported superior to semethicon in reducing crying time in an open, randomized study. More high-quality studies are needed to evaluate the effects of different probiotic strains in infants with functional gastrointestinal disorders.